back once again for Death Stranding. We're working on bringing South Knot City onto the Chiral Network. And let's try to recall what we did last time. Well, I don't quite remember. I know we unlocked... Yes, we, we, oh yes, we reconnected with, uh, Craftsman. And we also completed, a another mission to retrieve some sort of, some sort of tchotchke for, uh, Lake Knox, Lake Knot City. Um, before we head out, maybe we'll take a look at our mail. You're amazing. From William L. Thanks so much, Sam. The stories I heard didn't do you justice. Benjamin's still singing your praises, too. Once again, excellent work. Say, I don't suppose you're a fan of Portal as well, are you? I'd like to give you a valve by way of thanks. I'd also like to share with you a story. You know that one huge explosion that happened years and years ago? Well, rumor has it that the lake formed by it, Ground Zero, has another kind of valve at the bottom of it. I also heard that the monsters, called BTs, are aliens that hail from another world, one that was linked to this one by way of that explosion. That's the story, anyway. So make sure you keep the valve closed tight, Sam, or the aliens will come and get you. So that's William L. And Peter Englert. A heartfelt expression of gratitude. My dear Mr. Bridges, I must applaud you on a job exquisitely executed. I am given to understand that the pizza in question arrived in impeccable condition. Marvelous. Alas, I must also apologize on behalf of my sister. She was asleep when you arrived, you see. As for myself, I was out and about attending to private matters that demanded my utmost attention. But I am on way home as I write. I would have very much preferred to thank you face to face, but on this occasion, you will have to forgive me. That was for our pizza delivery. The Elder, why join the UCA? You still out there fighting the good fight, kiddo? I tip my hat to you for that, and for bringing an old curmudgeon his medicine. I'm doing a whole lot better for it. Much obliged. So in exchange for signing a contract with Bridges, I get meds and supplies delivered to my doorstep? Huh. That's no different from the deal I had with Fragile Express. And while I may not have full use of this here network of yours, I can access the weather data and news I need to make life easier than before. All that without my having to join the UCA, so what incentive is there to do so? Of course, he did eventually join the Chiral Network, but not the UCA. Finally, William Lake. You've got to go the extra mile. Thanks again, Sam. You really came through for us today. Now you can tell me to mind my business if you like, but I couldn't help but notice that you've been getting better delivery evaluations lately. Looks like you know what you stand to gain if you go the extra mile. Or do you? Providing that extra bit of service to make people happy, the miscellaneous grade is the most important part of the whole evaluation system for you, right? Heh, <laughs> speaking of happy, I just remembered the time you first came here, after crossing Ground Zero. True, successfully delivering cargo to its destination is your job, first and foremost. But people are demanding. They don't just want their shit carried from A to B. They want a little more, you know? Special treatment. Something that'll put a smile on their face. Hey, I get it. It's a lot more work for you, tracking down lost cargo, returning items to their rightful owners, and it's not really part of the job description either. But you better get used to it, because the standards are changing, and people are only going to expect more from their porters. Anyway, it's usually worth your while. Going above and beyond is a good way to rack up plenty of likes. And hell, sometimes you end up doing it without even realizing you did. I'm serious. Next time you complete an order, take a closer look at your results. See if there isn't a symbol next to your likes, which indicates that you got them for performing tasks related to the miscellaneous grade. You might be surprised. It may all seem like a hassle right now, Sam, but having a good miscellaneous grade will get you more likes, and you can never have too many likes.
That's it for those. Let's take a look at some of our new interviews. Die Hardman. The Symbiotic Surveillance Society. In the world before the Stranding, the online service industry was huge, possibly the biggest of them all. People wanted their lives to be smooth and stress-free, and countless companies were happy to oblige. Customers would provide information about themselves, browsing history, purchasing history, that kind of thing, and in return, they'd get a pleasant, personalized internet experience. It wasn't li anything like the dystopian surveillance state people used to worry about in the 20th century. Predictive advertising, customized health tips, that sort of thing. The internet transformed our lives, and in many ways for the better. But not everyone was happy. People started to worry that it was encroaching on people's freedoms. That the price we paid for so much convenience was constant monitoring and an abdication of control. We had become members of a symbiotic surveillance society. Naturally, there are people who have similar concerns about the chiral network. There's a pretty sizable faction that wants nothing to do with it whatsoever. That said, I can't help but feel that they're being naive. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Connectivity and convenience have to come at a price. What's more, the stakes are a whole lot higher nowadays. We're not talking about a simple trade-off between privacy and convenience. It's the network or bust, survival or extinction, as far as humanity is concerned. Higgs Particles Higgs Monaghan? Why, yes, I know the name. The former leader of a private courier organization, as I recall, which serviced a large region in the West, and was instrumental in providing continued support to the people living there. But as we were so far apart, Bridges struggled to maintain any measure of influence over their operations. It probably didn't help that the separatist movement has always enjoyed strong support in that territory. In the wake of growing violence by the demons, we were shocked to learn that Higgs himself was at their head. What to make of this strange development? Why on earth would a man who once commanded a group devoted to American Reconstructionism suddenly pledge himself to the cause of American destruction? His name only compounds the insult. Have you heard of the Higgs particle, also known as the God particle? It is associated with the Higgs field, that which gives all other particles their mass. Without it, atoms would fly apart and matter would not exist as we know it. In other words, its very presence prevents mindless destruction. Cosmic irony, indeed. I thought it was called the Higgs boson, but maybe uh, I'm out of touch. Preppers, terrorists posing as fragile express couriers. The craftsmen. The terrorists have been at it again lately. You heard, right? About how they're how they've been sneaking in and out of cities disguised as fragile express couriers. We'll have another disaster on our hands at this rate, but it's not like we can just cut them out. We need Fragile's people to keep on doing what they're doing. We rely on those guys for a lot, though maybe we shouldn't. I hear they're transporting weapons now. Why'd they be so stupid? I can't imagine. Spreading shit around that kills in a world where the dead are ticking BT bombs? Sure, terrorists are a threat, and mules a royal pain in the ass. But what genius figured escalation was the way to go when all know where it leads? We need weapons, no, tools, that can take down the bad guys without killing them. And we need the hardware in circulation gone yesterday. We can't keep folks from dying in accidents or getting sick. We can't keep them from dying, period. But the deaths we can put off, we ought to. Violence isn't just ugly, it's damn near suicidal in this day and age, which is why I'm looking to make a bunch of less than lethal gear in the hopes that it'll prevent a few idiots from getting themselves and others killed. And that's it for our backlog of mail and data. Some interesting blueprint that popped up for us yesterday was the reverse trike long range, an improved version. Well, why not just make this?
And what's going to happen? Uh... Now I'm... I wonder... Did it go to the garage? What, uh... What happened? Something I haven't figured out yet is... I don't think we can actually access the garage directly. The only way we can get to it is indirectly when we leave the private room. So I'm not sure. <laughs> if I just get on it, is it going to tell me what it is? No. What if I use the inventory? So it said it was an improved version. Does it still have the ability to hold cargo? Or is it yet another side grade? Reduces the trike's cargo capacity but increases its range. Well, that is somewhat unfortunate. Uh, if that is the case. Oh, there's the garage. I am just <laughs> completely blind. So I don't really want that because we have not had issues with range at all. So I would I would save the the long range model for a situation where we really need it. And so far we've made some pretty long journeys with this thing without any issues. Not to mention the fact that it holds cargo is extremely useful. At least now I know where we can access the garage. I can't believe I didn't see it earlier. Um, no, I can believe it. Let's go ahead and stop meandering and take on a mission. Prototype bot delivery. Ah. This is for the delivery bots that we have heard. The autonomous delivery bots are bipedal machines designed to operate within the Cairo network service area. They deliver cargo via a predetermined route dictated by the network. Now you are to bring the bot prototype to Lake Knot City's Southern Distro Center. When you arrive, connect the center to the Cairo network and test the bot to make sure it's functioning properly. Now this is going to be very cool, I think, because if I'm reading the map correctly, that orange line is a paved road, meaning we can just about ride it the entire way there. So that is pretty cool. We've prepped a prototype bot for transport. You'll need to take it to the distro center south of Lake Knot City. If these autonomous delivery bots prove reliable, they could revolutionize our supplies distribution network. A lot's riding on this, so be careful out there. I have a sinking suspicion that the delivery bots are going to become a kind of uh, management mini game. Um. It's going to be more trouble than it's actually worth. Well, we'll try anything once. It's just, I've, I've played a few games like this, and... Yeah, most of the time... Those are useful if you are engaging in a lot of side content, but as for doing anything else, um, I'm just seeing what we want to put there. Nothing we want access to. Pretty much always my strategy. 
And um, I'm not really... Load capacity reached. Mind telling me how... Okay. Because they're big containers, that's why. So that's it, huh? Two large containers. Well... And we'll save up, just so we don't have to repeat any of that. Oh, <laughs> uh, we have to get off the vehicle first. You got, you got me, game. Off we go. So we're going to follow the road as much as we can. And we're going to remember that boosting is a thing. Oh, how many precious minutes of gameplay did we waste? Because we didn't know about boosting. I just can't get enough of seeing Sam wiggle left and right like this. So that's going to be what I'm doing. Gotta stay right on the center in order to get that energy. It's the energy zone. Sam would not be caught dead outside of the energy zone. All this spooky mu music playing as we effortlessly glide on by on our floating highway. And this is actually not, not all thanks to us. We did contribute to a couple roads. When, uh, when it was convenient for us. But this mostly, uh, we mostly have other players to thank for this. Oh, that must be why uh, power sliding wasn't working. Yeah, so power sliding makes a lot more sense when we can actually, just keep going straight, when we can actually, uh, when we're boosting. Wow, that is just such a long distance. We just, uh, okay. Destination. Uh, let's check what the elevation's gonna be. It's gonna be rocky. We wanna avoid that pit. And we will have to cross a river. It's it's just so unfortunate how this how low resolution this map is and how limited our our controls are here to see the elevation. The fact we can tilt it at all is quite convenient, but I'd love to just see a, a normal elevation map. Why why don't we have clearly we have the data for it. Well, enough complaining. Another auto paver. But it's a bit out of our our budget. Keep on keeping on. I do kind of wonder, um Does the fact that other players are building helpful structures for us? Uh, let's detract somehow from the gameplay. And if we didn't have those structures, does that mean the game is taking longer than it's than is intended? Oh, and speaking of that, a bridge. Just what we needed.
are we being carried to the end of the game or is it is it intentional i just yeah i don't know um If the gameplay is is apparently so If the gameplay is such that we would want to bypass it in the first place. Verifying ID. Clear. Weapons detected. All weapons will be locked until departure. Cargo Is that a good is is that a good thing? I, I don't know. Are we always gonna be guaranteed to bypass it? because of other players playing this game for so long. All clear. Welcome, Sam Porter Bridges. We will have to ponder these things more later. For now, time for deliveries. You can just go ahead and take these right off of the bike, which is a nice little quality of life feature. took a little bit of a tumble off of that a controlled tumble uh, but it wasn't enough to even make a dent in the cargo many now turn to you for assistance that's funny because I feel like we have been relying on many people for assistance throughout the game. And we can now carry more cargo. Wow, we got a lot out of that one mission. And it was These so easy too. To operate outside the network service area. So let's get the distro center linked up already. Well, if we ever end up needing to grind, seems like auto pavers are the way to go. Two bridges boots. And there it is. I'll start prepping for the tests. You sit tight and wait for HQ to ring. Much obliged, Sam. Now the bots can enter the final phase of testing. I designed them myself, you know. My hope is that they'll lighten the load a little bit. Unlike human quarters, if one goes down, it won't cause a void out. Before the Death Stranding, scientists used to fret over the singularity, the possibility that someone might create an AI smarter than any human. But it never happened. Machines don't cause void outs. They can't die. They don't have beaches. No matter how far they come, machines will never understand death like we do. And because of that, They'll never truly surpass us. Get on the delivery terminal. I'll walk you through how to use the bots. And don't worry, I'll keep an eye on things from over here. Well, there certainly were a lot of implications in what she just said. Uh, do These not have the energy. These bots are designed to process some orders for you. Simple, run-of-the-mill orders only. Take a look at what's available. 
I do not have the energy to engage with that right now. Cargo transported by a bot is liable to get a little roughed up if the road's poor. On the flip side, a bot traveling on a well-maintained road is more likely to deliver cargo in better shape. Also faster, in case it wasn't obvious. Keep that in mind when sending them out. A well-maintained road, huh? So... How do I make them use the road? Because... It says projected post-delivery damage 75%, which is more than the required <laughs> minimum damage. Because that, that is 75%. That is a lot of damage. That doesn't mean only 25% damage. That means it has one-fourth of its health remaining, essentially, as far as how I understand this so is there anything we can do to mitigate that and we built out all these auto pavers so why why is it so damaged um well we might as well give it a try and see what happens i don't have high hopes and who knows maybe we're misreading <laughs> the damage it's just I understood that it always counts up from zero. You can decide how to use this one. <sighs> Sorry. Baby's fussing again. Thanks, Sam. We'll talk later. Good work, Sam. These autonomous delivery bots will benefit everyone. From folks in cities and way stations to preppers out in the back of beyond. But you must be exhausted. Why not take a break? I bet your BB could probably use one, too. Head for the private room. Go on. Your work is greatly okay. I guess we're just going. <laughs> I did not have a choice. Sorry, didn't mean to startle you. You were sleeping when I dropped by. Thanks for the shower. Right. Look, I gotta ask. 
I've been hearing things about you. She's in bed with terrorists. Don't trust her. She's just another dumbass Higgs fucked over. She's a goddamn hero, that woman. Tell me, Sam, what does America mean to you? The way my dad made it sound, we were something special. The glue that held it all together. More than a nation. A symbol of freedom and hope. We could bring it all back if we kept on making deliveries and connecting people. He was sure of it. I was a wreck after he died. That's when Heeks made his pitch. Together, we can run packages from sea to shining sea. Back then, he had a monopoly west of here. We both stood to gain a lot from a partnership. Business was pretty good at first. But then, a year ago, when those fanatics started stirring up trouble, Fuckers hijacked our system. Somehow they got a hold of our security passes and used them to sneak into cities. And just like that, we're delivering guns and bombs instead of medicine, and I didn't even know. We were just cogs in a terrorist machine. Higgs was behind it all. And on top of that, he got his hands on an old school nuke that I ended up carrying right into Middle Knot City. You tell me then. Yeah. It was me. I blew it up. Could have been different if I wasn't so fucking blind. So I did everything in my power to stop South Knot City from getting destroyed. I tried to get the nuke out of the sea. But Higgs was one step ahead. He took his pound of flesh and then some. Some wounds. They don't heal. Whatever time I've got left, the rain took. So there you have it. Everything's true. Except for all the lies. I don't give a damn about bridges or putting America back together. But I'm not about to let Higgs and some terrorists take my father's legacy and shit all over it. That's why I came to you. So, trust me now. I'll be there for you, Sam. All you have to do is call. So, Fragile was tricked into blowing up the nuke, and we have only Higgs to blame. And she's out for revenge against Higgs. But Sam, well, as usual, he seemingly had nothing to say on the matter. It looks like we may have gotten a few more messages, so let's take a look at those before we sign off for the day. Thomas Sutherland. Recovery request V. Track down a chip with a weird symbol on it. Hey Sam, how's every little thing? I've got a favor to ask if you can spare the time. One of the porters we work with spotted something strange out by the crater lake near South Knot City. Said it looked like some kind of chip. You know, for data storage? Had a V symbol carved into it, too. Don't know about you, but no one around here has ever heard of one like that. Porter who found it was fixing to bring it back here for an analysis, but got jumped by mules. He managed to make it out alive, just barely, but lost the chip. It'll be a while yet before he's back on his feet, so we can't ask him to go get it. Which is where you come in, Sam. This isn't urgent or anything, 
but if you could fit it into your schedule somehow, I'd be grateful. Head to the distribution center south of Lake Knot City to accept the order and make it official. Much obliged, as always. And new interview. Drones in the Singularity, Mama. Yep, the bot is good to go. We're putting it through some field tests within the network service area. Should have given the results before long. Delivery efficiency within a given region is expected to improve following a successful Cupid connection as well. No, that won't be a problem. The bot's just a cargo carrier. Human input is required to accept orders and set coordinates. Drone sy syndrome shouldn't be a factor, and the singularity? Not a chance. Well, think about it. AI doesn't die. It might get upgraded or replaced, but that's not at all comparable to death. So it has no reason to fear it, you see? The concept is completely foreign, incomprehensible. Death comes to all living things, but only humans have the capacity to understand the implications, to imagine what it means to no longer exist. That's one limitation AI won't ever overcome. That's the reason it won't ever surpass human intelligence. That's certainly an opinion. And I think that's going to do it for now. We'll leave Sam in his private room and come back next time for some more Death Stranding. So see you next time.